Okay. Let us now look at question number seven. It is a very simple question. Which Salesforce API is invoked to deploy, retrieve, create, update or delete customization information such as custom objects, custom objects using Salesforce connection? Uh, I don't think bulk API, it is not metadata API. Actually, it is REST API. Mostly Salesforce APIs are REST APIs. Mostly we use that. So I guess this REST API is a correct answer. Okay, let us go to next one. This is interesting. What a cluster with two customer hosted mule runtimes is hosting an application that has a flow with JMS listener configured to consume messages from a queue destination. Okay, they are consuming from a queue. So, which JMS listener configuration must be used to receive messages on all the nodes of the cluster? Okay, so what they are saying is they are having a cluster of two machines on customer hosted runtimes. There is a cluster. And this application is having JMS listener, which is consuming messages from a queue. So, what they are saying is, as this is a cluster, which JMS listener configuration must be used to receive messages in all the nodes of the cluster. So, let me show you. Um, here, I have a flow with uh, this JMS module on new message drag. In advanced tab of this com uh, component, there is something called as primary node only. By default, this is selected. That means when you deploy on a cluster, one of the node in the cluster will be elected as primary. So the listener will receive only from the primary node. Suppose if this node 1 is primary, the listener will always listen on primary node. It will get messages on primary node only. This message listener, this JMS listener will never receive the messages if this is selected. So if you want both the nodes to process, then you can select, you can unselect this primary node only. That is the option. So let us come to the options here. They are saying use parameter primary node only equals to false, correct, on a JMS listener with shared subscription. Oh, this is actually the confusion part. What is this shared subscription? Subscriptions will be there for topics. But here in the question, they have used Q. You have to be very careful when reading. So this does not apply to queues. And there's only one option here, use parameter primary node only equals to false on JMS listener. This applies to Q. So my answer is this one. Okay, next. Let us see the question number nine. An organization plans to migrate all Mule applications to runtime fabric. Okay, currently all Mule applications have been deployed to Cloud Hub using automated CI CD scripts. Which steps should be taken to properly migrate applications from Cloud Hub to RTF, keeping the same deployment strategy? Oh, so earlier they were deploying to Cloud Hub, now they want to deploy to RTF. So, what changes should be done? What is the first option? Runtime fabric deployment profile should be added to mule configuration files in all mule applications no so in mule configuration files we don't need to do anything related to deployment no this is not correct answer second one runtime fabric dependency should be added as mule plugin to form.xml there is no specific dependency for runtime fabric no this is not correct answer Third option says no changes need to be made to form.xml and CI CD scripts should be modified. No, 
actually what in pom.xml you need to add runtime deployment profile in all mule applications and csd scripts should be modified as per rtf configurations so in pom.xml actually there is a mule maven plugin setup which we need to do where we need to configure the runtime fabric deployment so let me just google for uh, mule maven plugin <coughs> here is a mule soft documentation now here is a mule soft documentation and here are the instructions how to deploy applications to any point runtime fabric and here i guess see this is the configuration to be done uh, inside pom.xml inside mule maven plugin configuration you have to add this right that is the thing to be done in pom.xml so so according to me this is the right answer okay let us see the next question a corporation has deployed <coughs> mule application to customer hosted mule runtimes mule applications deployed to these runtimes are managed from any point platform okay what needs to be configured to monitor these mule applications from any point monitoring and what sends the monitoring data to any point monitoring okay let me explain your concept here i'll go to my login any point login and i'll go to any point monitoring by default for any cloud hub deployed applications we can actually view the dashboards directly within the built-in dashboards but it will not show dashboards for customer hosted runtimes if you want to enable any point monitoring for customer hosted runtimes in settings okay um, hybrid you have to go and here are the instructions <coughs> to configure any point monitoring for on premise environments so you have to select which server and download this am zip any point monitoring zip and follow the steps what this will do is it will install a monitoring agent on our runtime actually whenever we start our runtime this monitoring agent also will start and that will send the metrics to this any point monitoring that is a constant so the question here is based on that so what needs to be configured to monitor and what sends monitoring data to any point monitor the first option says by default any point monitoring agent a will be installed no second option says enable monitoring for individual applications from runtime manager application settings no install any point monitoring agent on each mule runtime okay this is option and any point monitoring agent sends monitoring data from mule applications to any point monitor this is the correct answer according to me okay so i'll see you in next video